What is up, everyone? We are back today uh, reviewing Cobra Kai Season 3, the Karate Kid sequel series currently airing on Netflix. And as you may notice, I'm not in my usual company today. Henry is um, off on other duties, so he couldn't join us today. But we have some new faces here to help give voice some new input into this crazy, crazy show, this very, very crazy season. So uh, introducing them as I see as I, they appear on my screen. On my left, we have my good friend, Angela Rose. And then on the bottom, we have my brother, Thomas. So uh, whoever wants to go first, you can introduce yourselves, tell, tell, them, tell the viewers a little about who you guys are. All right. Um, hi, I'm Angela Rose. Uh, I'm friends with Nick. We went to high school together and we're still friends now. Um, some of my favorite shows, I guess. I really like Parks and Rec and I love Stranger Things and complaining about Stranger Things. So yeah. Very good, very good. Hi, I'm Thomas. I am Nicholas's younger brother. Uh, well, I guess I basically like the same things that he does. A DC fan. Uh, I do watch The Flash, Arrow, and all those shows. I guess my favorite show, though, would be like the Avatar universe and Legend of Korra. All right, all right. And you guys, you guys just, both of you just recently got into Cobra Kai, right? Like last year over quarantine. Uh, yes, I watched it all in one sitting. Very good, very yeah. good. All right, so uh, we'll just, we're gonna do, we're gonna break down season three, but just first like overall thoughts on um, just how this season either maybe lived up to expectations, exceeded expectations, did something underwhelm you, did something completely like crane kick you in the face? Like what, what are your just overall thoughts in the season? Um, I, I really liked it. I really liked season two though so I, I can't like decide which one I preferred but I, I did really enjoy this season I missed Miguel a lot because I would say that he's probably my favorite character and the fact that he was just like not in the first few episodes really for obvious reasons but I did miss him but I did really enjoy the season I liked how they incorporated the like the history between the movies too like I remember episode five I think or well, spoilers I guess but um Daniel, he goes back to Okinawa and meets like uh, Kumiko and the girl he saved from the tower in the second movie. I thought that was really fun to see them come back. Chosen came back and he brought like a new aspect of Cobra Kai, like the, the more like violent or uh, not Cobra Kai, Miyagi-Do karate. He brought a violent side of uh, Miyagi-Do to like the story. And it's like, it's very interesting to see that like, oh yeah, Miyagi-Do wasn't all like self-defense. There was a very violent, even though it was still in the theme of self-defense, it was still like a violent side to it. Mm -hmm. right right i i for me i think personally this was their best season i just loved watching how everything like came together there were very few i can only think of a very few um things that i was like as satisfied as seeing like that final like two minutes when they were like they finally like came together they're like united i was like that was like like a wonderful feeling i had um and like i feel like they they really like tried to like give like they touched on all the little character stuff they've been teasing for like Dimitri all of a sudden can like kick butt um all of a sudden like you know Hawks like whole like morality was like touched on they even like I didn't I just really enjoyed how they just brought everyone together like everyone just feels like developed even though there's like nine billion characters in the show everyone just felt developed and like you knew who these characters were you knew what they were like all fighting for and I really enjoyed seeing that um yeah, I think it was their I think it was their best season, but we can we can get into that later on as we um, discuss like how it reflects on the on what came before. What are what I want to discuss first is uh, Crease, because I did not expect them to do. I well, one I didn't expect them to do like his origin story. I didn't expect his origin story to last more than one episode. I was really surprised they kept they kept going with it. I just want to know like what are your what are you guys thoughts on? how that how that aspect of the story like played into everything i like their origin story because like what well, i remember miyagi telling daniel and i believe the first movie is there is no bad student only bad teacher and it kind of it made sense because like you know johnny was a student and he did everything crease said but it just goes to that crease was the bad teacher but then it also leaves a mystery who was crease's teacher that made crease so uh, like how he is and how like violent he is and they gave him a sort of how in the army he was taught like no mercy and it shows how he, had, he came from a very tragic origin 
Yeah, I agree because when you think about Cobra Kai in general, all the characters have backstory. Johnny and Daniel's entire backstory are in the Karate Kid movies. Well, Johnny only really in the first one, I guess. But um, but Kreese, you never get that background because he wasn't, you don't get to see that exploration of his character in the movies. So it was really interesting to finally get to see his backstory because it felt like something that we needed because every other character in the show has it for the most part and he was really the only one that was such a prominent character without that background right right i remember like looking back it should have been so obvious in hindsight but i remember like that first origin episode when like i was like oh the bully is crease like obviously but no it turns out it's the guy getting bullied it's the little it's the you know it's the janitor or whatever i thought that was so cool like like I said, looking back, it should have been like obvious, like in the moment, but I was like, oh shoot, like, you know, I guess it follows through with what has happened to everyone. Like everyone's been like bullied, like, like fought over, like, you know, like, like they, they, everyone's been at the bottom of the totem pole at least once. And I love like watching that, like, um, I don't know how it reflects on Johnny. Cause I know like Johnny was like bullied too, they, like from his dad. And like, he was like looked at as a loser. So I really enjoyed seeing how that played in, played into the story. I just, I honestly just didn't expect them to, like they really could have worked with crease just being like a crazy like um you know like really over the top guy but i really enjoyed watching that orton story and i love how they ended in like that like fight to the death and you didn't he didn't want to kill his like sergeant but at the end he was like no mercy and i was like that's pretty cool a little on the nose that like of course the pit was filled with snakes but i was like no that's all right that's how the show is well also the crease's origin story sets up for i guess season four like foreshadows for season four or gives a hint mm-hmm. as to what we could expect because uh karate kid movie uh, part three had mm-hmm. uh, i believe his name was terry silver and he was the guy that crease ends up saving in the war where he said oh i'll fight instead of you and at the end of the origin story he's like anything you you want in life i'm there for you like always and well at the end we see crease making a call who we could probably assume is terry and gonna he's probably gonna make a return in cobra kai season four right right I do, like you said earlier, I like, everyone said earlier, like, I do enjoy seeing how they've, like, remixed all the history and everyone's kind of, like, found a new place in the story. For me personally, though, the one sticking point was honest, was Chosen. I, he was the one, like, part of the history brought back that, like, I felt, like, I understood why they brought him back. And I enjoyed that, like, he taught Daniel the new technique and, like, all of that. But I, I, I just didn't like his um not performance I think his characterization like I thought it was so I thought it first they didn't give any explanation like he shows up and like he's really like stoic towards Daniel and Daniel's like I love the line when Daniel's like this is the most awkward conversation I've ever had in my life and he's like freaking out and like Trojan's a super like like um stone faced and then like he like like he, and then once he like beats Daniel in a fight he like gets all like personable and I was like that's kind of weird like there's no explanation why you're acting like that but I was like I guess so um how do you guys feel about how he was utilized um I think it felt a lot like since they were at Okinawa they had to like put him in so because it felt like you know with the with the female characters like it made sense with the way that they were implemented into the story but he almost felt like forced just so that they could introduce this new karate technique so that he could use it in the final fight which I'm sure will be used in the future as well but it, it just felt very like oh let's just get him in there while we're here that's how I felt at least I think they could have just explained more on his character redemption because in the movie he was very like stuck on being against Daniel like during the storm scene he did not help out Daniel he like left you know he tried to fight Daniel to the death and it ended there it's like there was like no like reasoning for him to go from like yeah this really evil dude to now like Daniel's buddy and teaching him karate and like I don't mind the character like redemption like I think it's a great idea to do but I think they did it in a very short time but I guess that's also may not be their fault it did feel kind of rushed though yeah yeah i don't know like when he was like acting like all nice i was like i don't know if you've been to therapy but i feel like you need to like there's a lot of like wild mood swings happening with you but i was like all right um yes uh speaking of returning characters i I, we have to touch on ali the 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 girl that basically caused this entire story more or less to occur what were you guys thoughts did you think she would be used more did you guys think she was used too much what, what, what did you guys what did you guys think 
I've always thought that Ali's uh, involvement in Cobra Kai was always really funny to me because like you watch Johnny talk about Ali so much in the first two seasons that you're like get over yourself like you dated her in high school it's been 30 years I really like to me it always felt like annoying I was always just like Johnny shut up Johnny shut up like I don't care just move on and so like to have her return I felt like was after talking about it so much she had to come back but it just felt very like oh, okay like I didn't I guess I just didn't care that much I was like okay yeah she's here now she's gone so yeah it was just kind of funny I feel like I feel like for me um she had to come back at some point she was too important to the story to not show up I just kind of I don't know she should I feel like she should have been in, in it more like I remember one of the theories going around was that since she was like a surgeon, she was the one going to fix Miguel. Excuse me, but then she like just shows up for like Christmas vacation. And then she like, I don't know, I, I kind of wasn't on board with how they just kind of like magically solved the relationship by her just being there. Like, all, like she tells a few embarrassing stories about each karate kid. And then now it's like, we're all good. We're all friends now. It's kind of like, ah, I don't know if that's how it works. Uh, I kind of wish she was just around a little more and she had more time to just like, play off the two play off both like daniel and johnny um i don't know the yeah. the rivalry the rivalry between like danny and johnny was so weird like i remember in the first two seasons it was so like back and forth like i remember one time daniel was telling i think it was sam or robbie i can't remember but it was like oh it's like you know people can change and he's like oh yeah because i was cobra kai once which happened in the third movie but then, like, after that, you, fi- you find himself saying, like, oh, yeah, no, people can't change. And then, like, he's back to saying, like, Cobra Kai people can't change. But then also then he keeps it going, like, back and forth. And it felt really weird to watch that because that sometimes, like, oh, yeah, they're going to solve it. But then, then they were like, oh, no, we got to stretch this rivalry out for, like, another season. And it became weird again. Yeah, I feel like, and that's why I think we've discussed this a few times where it's like the fourth season like should be the last season because like how much longer can you stretch out a rivalry between two people who are literally fighting about high school? You know what I mean? Like it it gets to a point where I feel like it's going to be like pathetic. It's like, get over yourselves, please. You both have your dojos, just go off, do your own thing. So I do agree with you that like, sometimes I was like, okay, wow, they're really fighting again. You know, is it the second episode where they do like the whole, good cop bad cop thing yeah it's like for the first time I was like wow they're working together this is so fun and then they end up like kicking each other in the face and I was like what is going on I was like can we not be friends for more than 25 minutes right that's why one thing I also really like one of my for me like one like one of the two breakout characters was um Amanda LaRusso because I loved her like little like comments that she was like this is stupid as hell what you two are doing or like this is like this is all dumb as she I loved how like the show like acknowledged how like to some extent like inherently ridiculous like the character like like uh, mindsets were and they like used her as like kind of like the voice of reason I love just how like the when she was like all right we'll just like call the cops on him on like crease because like you know that's what a reasonable person would do instead of like you know trying to pick a fight at his dojo like little stuff like it was nice to see that like that a, there was a there's a reasonable adult in in the valley because it seems like either they're non-existent seeing as how many times their kid excuse me their kids try to kill each other mm-hmm. or um it's either daniel johnny or crease so she was one of my breakout characters i don't know how you guys felt about her but um and it I- all I was like really indifferent towards her character for the first two seasons because it felt very much like, well, we need to give Daniel the perfect family. So throw in a wife, throw in two kids. Like what happened to his son? We don't know. We see him literally once. I just think it's funny. Like it's always just felt like they've just like written in his perfect family. And it wasn't until this season that I was like, oh, Amanda is like a, is like a character with like personality traits and lines of dialogue that feel natural. And I just feel like this is the first season that she felt like a real character right right um let's let's move to the let's move to the kids we've touched a little on the older generations talk on the kids and we can discuss this as a whole instead of breaking it down character by character um i want to start by saying this was my favorite um robbie storyline um i this was the storyline i felt the most for him and this is the storyline where i was like really like into like what was happening with him and i love where he started and where he ended up what are you guys thoughts on that 
I felt like it was the beginning was slow. It it was very boring. But at the end, it got better. Like how he ended up with Kreese. And he's against now his two former, or I guess former sensei and father. That was a good ending. But I felt like in this, it was a bit slow in the beginning. I liked what they did with him in the first two seasons. I just feel like Robbie's character has always been really interesting because it's such um, a tear between like good and bad, you know? Like he was doing Miyagi-Do with Daniel, who is the good guy sometimes. And then, but also he's the son of Johnny, who is the bad guy sometimes and I feel like at the end of season two you really get that one of the episodes this season was called nature versus nurture which I thought was so interesting because I've always felt that way about Robbie especially in season two when like he's been part of this dojo that teaches mercy and self-defense but then he's the one that literally pushes someone off a balcony and this season I just really felt that they pulled and emphasized on that good versus bad in him you know like he's in juvie so he's got to like stick up for himself but like deep down he's kind of a good guy and I feel like this season did a good job at exploring that inner um I guess like argument that he might be having with himself if that makes sense I don't know yeah that inner conflict I don't know. I kind of, <laughs> yeah, the inner conflict. I really liked watching that like develop. Also, mainly because like, well, back in like Avatar, one of my favorite characters is obviously Zuko and his character uh, arc of redemption. And I kind of see a little a bit of like Zuko in Robbie's story, where he's like he's very conflicted. And like even in the literal sense, like um, where his parents or his sensei and his father is, are like two rivals. And same thing happens with Zuko. But I feel like Robbie's confusion is very relatable, and how he, he's being taught good with Miyagi-Do, but then, like Angela said, he is the one that kicks Miguel off a balcony. It's very, like, I don't know, I felt like it's very symbolic of the confusion between, like, oneself, and it's, like, I don't know, for me, it was very relatable to be, like, oh, yeah, like, this kid's, like, really confused where to go. His father was, like, missing for his entire, like, basically the entire of his life, and he's just, his mom's, like, been MIA. He's just confused of what to do, and, like, when he thinks he's doing the right thing, he ends up falling off trail, and I just found that really relatable, and I really like watching, like, Robbie throughout the series. Hey, the last image, not really the last image, the image of, like, the, um, the, the, the older generation with their, like, protégés by their sides. I was like, that was the, that's one of the greatest setups for a final battle I've ever seen, because now it's, like, it's no longer just Daniel versus like Johnny. Now you have like three parties, three characters who like all feel like their own person with their own stakes in it, like will be fighting it out. And I think that's really fascinating. Me personally, I would prefer if not if somehow none of the three won in season four. Like somehow someone like like someone else from Cobra Kai or like whatever their combined dojo is like wins just as a way to like undercut the them because it's gonna feel like because I feel like it might feel bad if like one of them like beats out the other like I was okay with Miguel winning in season one because he was the protagonist essentially but um now you have three you have three players in the ring but I guess we'll see I guess we'll see what happens there that's just my thoughts on it um were there any moments like any like any like surprising stuff anything that made you laugh anything that like sticks out like you're like I did not expect that but I'm so glad that like happened Hawk yes yes i feel like his thing where he's like he's like oh now i kind of feel bad about everything i've done and like he like i'm kind of glad it happened like it it's nice to see at the end that he's like teaming up with dimitri again but it was kind of like chosen is like where did that come from like the season before you were like ready to kill dimitri but now you're kind of like oh i feel bad for breaking his arm he literally breaks his arm and then four episodes later is like let's be friends again yeah it's like that's (laughs) very like sudden but i'm glad it happened yeah me too because I I've always liked Hawk's character as well because I just think that again it's a very interesting character of being like well I was bullied my whole life and like now I can finally beat other people up um but it did I will admit it did feel out of nowhere but I do think the actor did a really good job carrying that story and that conflict with him of like there are so many shots throughout like even when he's about to break Dimitri's arm you can like see that he's like I don't know should I and then he's like okay and then he does it Hawk was definitely a really good one. I'm glad they like stopped teasing that like will he turn will he break bad? Will he turn good? And they finally just acted on it. I was really glad for that. Um what was one moment that surprised me? The whole fight in the LaRusso house like blew my mind. Not just because it was like I didn't think anything could top the school fight, but they yeah. they pulled that off like 
it's so funny like we've been in that house quite a few times already and then like just seeing it in that new sp- like that new perspective of them like tr- everyone trying to kill each other i was like i'm so well i'm like this was set up perfectly to like have people like being like thrown all around that was so cool to to watch and i think um i think it got a little over the top just the idea of like the like the rival gang showed up ready to like murder every- like not murder everyone but like basically like one kid got chucked through a window for crying out loud so i um that fight really blew my mind. That was so cool to watch. What was another? Um, what was an, I was surprised how they brought back Daniel's job. Like they made that a story point. And I was like, I actually like kind of vibe with this. Cause I was like, oh yeah, there's still like realistic fallout to like your kids trying to like, you know, one kid's nearly dying and, and like at a, at a school. And like, I love, I love how they transitioned that they use that to like bring him back to Okinawa. Like it made sense. I think it was a little too actually i'm okay like with the whole idea of like the girl he saved was the one who like bailed him out i was okay with that what um but i really like how they brought back his job i was i don't know it just felt like an interesting storyline especially since like johnny was just like drinking around those first three episodes or so yeah i don't know i just feel like i'm always i'm always just like okay i'm done looking at a car dealership show me the karate again i feel like that's always where i'm at whenever we're at the car dealership i'm like i'm bored Uh, your cousins are kind of annoying please just bring me back but i understand why you like it like i get that it's interesting i just don't like it um i want to touch on the i want to touch on the ever shifting love triangle between between um, sam miguel and robbie because can I just say before, I like how Cobra Kai, like, well, I guess a main part of it is, like, the love relationships, but it touches on, like, love relationships more, and I guess better than the movies did, because, like, with the movies, I guess the first one was kind of, you would have the love relationship between him and Ali, but then, like, it just, like, stops at the end, and that's it, and, like, they didn't really do much with it, but I like how Cobra Kai, I guess, had a way of incorporating love relationships as an important part to the storyline. Um, I don't know. Okay, because here's my thing. Sam, say, I actually really like what they did with Sam's character this season. I'm just throwing that out there. Adding that whole, like, um, mental health, like, anxiety, I guess, element to her, like, dealing with this, I think was a great perspective on how, again, this is, like, taking a toll on all of them in many different ways. Um, she, oh, I just don't know. I, her and Miguel, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I feel. Okay. Fair enough. Fair I'm enough. conflicted. I'm conflicted. <laughs> like I, 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 oh, I, I would have, I, I enjoyed it just because one, they have such good, the actresses have such good chemistry together. And like my man, Miguel is like smooth as hell um, in several scenes. But like, um, I, I think I'm really glad they gave Daniel the line where he goes, um, you've been, you've been blowing through boys pretty fast in these past, past few, past few months. I, I don't know. It just another again the show being a little self aware. I'm, I think for I think that like especially the idea of like um, Sam being like the leader of Miyagi Do and like Miguel being rep repping I guess Eagle Fang now. Like I feel like I enjoyed I I enjoyed them as like I enjoyed them coming back together. I just hope they like either keep it in season four or like they don't have to like break off even though they gave so much time to her and um, Robbie in season two. It'll just feel like too much if they like start ping ponging back and forth. I like how like Sam's character like she was very aggressive in season three, which wouldn't exactly I guess you would consider Miyagi Do uh, his mentality, and I kind of like that because it and it shows in Daniel too in the last episode, and it goes in with the theme. It's like you know within darkness there there is light, hence like Cobra Kai becoming good people or Eagle Fang now, but then on the flip side within light there is darkness and. I think in the in the last episode, the way I looked at it, when uh, Daniel numbed out uh, Chris's limbs and him and Johnny kind of locked eyes and nodded in agreement, I'm pretty sure they were going to end Chris right there. I, like, I, they had the look in the eye. Like, I'm pretty sure they were going to end. Like, he wasn't going to go for the kill and then, like, twist his nose. Like, I'm pretty sure he was going to end Chris right there if it weren't for, like, I guess, Sam and Miguel stopping them. And I guess that was, like, really interesting to see. Like, oh, yeah, Miyagi-Do is, well, I guess... The good guys from the movies but you could also see like they are exactly perfect people and i thought that was really interesting right right um let's see any other like standout characters like i know for me tori i really enjoyed i really loved the episode where they gave like 
you got a little glimpse into her home life i just thought and like the way they built up like her increase for a while there i thought they were going to build up like a hawk hawk thought he was going to be cobra kai's number one but crease was prepping tori and then that was going to be like the rivalry um didn't happen but i mean i'm intrigued to see where what they do with that because she's definitely like the head of them now she and robbie are definitely like like getting together in season four yeah. which is gonna be hell i know it's gonna be so awkward but you know it's okay it's gonna be real awkward but it's it's cobra kai what can we say um yeah, I thought I, I really enjoyed what they did with Tori this season. Were there any other like characters moments? Or if just, you want to like talk touch on Tori as well, just you bringing up um, Tori and oh my god, Robbie. Um, it just kind of it was so interesting how they tackled all of these different characters being angry at each other for what happened to Miguel. Because I feel like Tori was like pretty pissed about this whole thing at the beginning of the season but then she pretty quickly is like oh okay yeah you stole a snake you're okay and the same thing with Hawk like Hawk was really angry about obviously Miguel being in a coma and I just feel like they all kind of forgave Robbie too quickly and I think that maybe if they had isolated Robbie's character even more like if he had no ties to the Cobra Kai kids no more ties to the Miyagi-Do kids and then he went to Crease. I think it would have felt a little better and a little more like, wow, like this is the only person he has right now. And I feel like it was just like a weird push towards making him on that side. I don't know. That's just my opinion though. Very well, very well. I, I understand. I get what I get what you're saying. I think I'm curious how they could have done that. There's only so many more ways you can isolate a character other than prison. But like I do, I I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Um, I thought about that. Okay, it's okay. Um, were there any like standout like episodes if you can remember them? I know for me, my favorite was maybe the second to last episode. Um, that's the episode where uh, Daniel and Miguel finally talk. They have that like opening sequence where like the three senseis are giving speeches and they're intercut with each other that was arguably my favorite scene i thought they said i thought that was like a, just a like a such a sort of powerful thing before the fam finale came um, i don't know i not i watch things so i mean i've had this conversation with nick before but i watch mm -hmm. things so like quickly that sometimes i lose track of like episodes themselves just because i'm I literally will like sit and watch for like 10 hours. You know what I mean? Like right. I don't get up at all. Um, but I, I definitely do agree that that second to last episode, because I do think in a second to last episode, it's important to make you want to watch the last episode. And it definitely did. So I can agree that that episode was done really well. Right, right. What about Tom? Any, any like moments or any specific like events that you gravitated towards? Not really. I guess, I don't know. I really enjoyed the trip back to Okinawa but the second to last episode I liked it but I felt like how it was very quick and sudden how Daniel all of a sudden accepted Miguel for being Cobra Kai and I guess uh, it was it, it was good that it happened but I don't know I guess my favorite episode would still be the like um where he went back to Okinawa because I really like you know going back bringing back the old characters and how like Daniel went back to his history figured out something new about Miyagi stuff like that that letter scene was a highlight for sure. The letter yeah. scene was a highlight. That was that was really great on both uh, Ralph Macchio's part and uh, I can't remember Kimiko's actress, but that was great from from both of them. I love how they keep finding ways to bring him back. Um, so I said in the beginning that this was my favorite season. It may dip down as like I the high of watching it so soon like like um, dies off. But where do you guys think it, this falls in for you guys? I don't know because I really did enjoy season two so much like season one to me is definitely like the weakest of the three of them season two was just so good and I think the ending of season two is what made it like that fight scene is insane and I don't think anything in the show has topped it maybe the letter scene is like right up with it but really that scene was really hard to like top for me so I feel like that's why I like season two so much and I like the introduction of Tori's character in season two and everything but this season was really good in setting up the next season so they both work well for where they are in the show right right yeah and like I know for me um for what was essentially a table setting season they still managed to make it their own like 
like ev- like it still felt managed to feel like its own chapter its own book like and you were like oh this isn't just them like spinning the wheels until the next season it still felt like everything was just everything everything arrived at the end like with the exact purpose and intent they felt which i which i appreciate tom were you gonna say you gonna say something no i agree with you i feel like well personally season three was very fun to watch and it might be my favorite but like i also enjoyed season two but only i guess like the the second half of season two but I guess that's, like, with the most action. Like, the last episode, amazing fight scene. Like, I wish I could do karate in school, but I'd get in trouble. Um, But also, the third season was, like, really enjoyable to watch. But I guess it's because it was all building up. But, no, yeah, definitely season one was definitely the weakest. That was... It was it was good, but no. Yeah. Um. All right, we're going to start... We're going to... We're going to finally wrap up. But anything... Any predictions? Any, like wants from season four should it be the last season do you think you want to push it forward do you think like this is where you want this is where you want characters to end up either with each other or like you know in their own like what do you guys want from season four which i believe is actually shooting now so we could expect that maybe hopefully by the end of the year well i definitely think season four should be the last um don't overwrite your TV show. It bothers me and it's annoying. Um, but I definitely think season four will be a really, I'm expecting a lot of closure for every single character, no matter whether or not they're a good guy or a bad guy throughout the last season. I just feel like closure for every character, including like someone like Crease. Like I, I hope, like my brother thinks that they're just gonna kill him off. And I was like, I don't know if they'll do that. That seems pretty intense. Yeah. Um, but definitely some kind of closure for every single character. I, f- I hope um, that season four is the last one because the way season four is heading, it's gonna it's basically Johnny and Daniel against Chris. It's no longer Johnny and Daniel, which which is good. You can't just keep on running off of that conflict. And I, they changed it, but I don't think they should stretch that for like two seasons. And I guess prediction wise, like I said, Terry, I think he's gonna come back because they touched upon like basically first two movies, so they might as well touch up on the third one. And bring him back and i think that might have the i guess theme of like fear in season four with a lot of them being scared because if i remember correctly one of miyagi's famous quotes in, was, came in the third movie where it's like it's okay to lose to like your opponent or something but you can't lose to fear and i guess that was kind of played upon with uh, sam and how she was very scared of tori but i think they might use that concept more in season four Right, right. I got you. I got you. Um, I know for me, if they're still planning to do 10 episodes, I think the first five should just be the tournament. They should not hold the tournament off till the very end. And I think that the rest of the five should just be exploring, just like wrapping everything up, exploring the fallout of whoever wins, whatever happens. Um, I it'll, I think it'll be too easy to have like Robbie, Sam and like Miguel like shake hands at the end and be like, you know, go out for a dr- like, you know, from milkshake or whatever. I think that would be too easy for the characters. I would much rather it be like Johnny and the, the Lawrence, the Lawrence father and son, like finally like sit down and have a conversation. And I, um, Miguel, like Miguel and like Sam, like maybe finally stay together. Um, I don't know. That's like, I think that they should not stretch out the tournament any more than they need to. It should be just the first five. So you have the momentum. And then the last five is just exploring the fallout, wrapping up loose ends. Um, yeah, I think that, I think that's about, I think that's it. Like the, there's no way they can push it further unless they actually, I don't think I can't even think of anything It'll, by that point. You're just, you're just spinning BS. Daniel, uh, uh, yeah. Daniel and Johnny, that, rivalry or that conflict should end or not end but like that should have closure in the first two episodes if it comes later then it, it was it's stretched too thin i think like they the should pop, they should yeah. finish off that in like maybe the first two episodes and then they could continue with like the tournament and then bring closure to like robbie and johnny or maybe like the love triangle or like that yeah. but that little conflict from the movies that should end as soon as possible with season four i would love this may be too similar to the Rocky franchise because they did the same thing, but I would love if Johnny and Daniel had some sort of friendly like rematch, like just for the hell of it. Like, I think that would be just really fun. Um, yeah, it might be too similar to the Rocky franchise, but I think it would be such a great moment to like, like Johnny's still pushing. He's like, hey, no, like kicks to the face or whatever. And Daniel's like, it was legal, man. It was legal. Like, I think that'd be a nice character moment for them both. Yeah. Um, 
I hope I Hawk that, yeah. shaves his mohawk. <laughs> I hope that it's a release of who he was and he becomes a new person with better hair. But his haircut was so bad before, such a such a dork before. I like, disagree. Yeah. <laughs> I disagree. I mean, okay, I feel like the shaving of the hair could be like him being released from his old character in his Ex- old bad ways. Exactly. But exactly. Bro, I kind of like his hair. No. <laughs> I think you should change think- the color to yellow so it's black and yellow for COVID. No, I think I think they should just like he should get a, he should get a new tattoo. No. <laughs> That's the <he> <laughs> I like his haircut though. It's pretty cool. Guess we'll find out. Hawk and his haircut. Will it happen? Season four. Gotta tune in to find out. Uh, I think that will wrap up our discussion of Cobra Kai. Highly recommended. It's on, I know it's for me, it's on one of my top 10 favorite shows currently on Netflix. So it's literally number one. Literally number one. Outstanding. Yes, sir. Um, so yeah, highly recommend the show. Hope you enjoyed the video. Me and Henry will be back breaking down um, our top 10 lists from 2020 throughout the rest of the week so be sure to check those out and uh make sure to like the video comment subscribe let your friends know we're, we're discussing we've got a whole new stuff with uh disney plus and hbo max coming out in the next few months so be sure to stay tuned for that uh until next time then peace out